Good afternoon, everyone. Twenty-five-year male presented with diminution of vision in left eye since two years, paresthesia of right side of the face, and right upper and lower limb weakness since five months. MRI brain was done. It was a large lobulated homogeneously enhancing mass lesion. It was seen in the left lateral ventricle, measuring nine point three by seven point one by eight point nine centimeter. This lesion was causing the ventricular dilatation along with the midline shift. I'd like to invite Dr. Deep T from K J Sumaya Medical College and Hospital to discuss this case. One H N E slide was provided, and total eight micro microphotography images are shown here. Dr. Deep T. Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Deepthi, assistant professor in KJ Sohma Hospital. Okay, presenting case number three. We received nine unstained slides. Now the HNE section on the low power showed the tumor predominantly composed of the papillae. At places or focally, this tumor had a solid pattern because of the fusion of this papillae. Now coming to the high power, uh, this uh, papillae, the individual papillae, they were lined by the single type of epithelial, uh, single type of cuboidal. Uh, a single layer of a cuboidal epithelium with the centrally placed nucleus. Now, this nucleus is vesicular in type. Now, uh, the cells have a very cell, uh, distinct cell border, and uh, eosinophilic moderate to uh, moderate eosinophilic to uh, clear cytoplasm. So, these cells have a moderate as well, uh, moderate eosinophilic as well as clearing of the cytoplasm, and the nuclear was showing moderate. is a uh, nuclear pleomorphism also uh, so we also noted that there were uh, there were uh, extracellular uh, eosinophilic highland bodies or highland globules apart from this we did not notice the areas of necrosis or any syncytial or a whirling pattern or there are no increase in mitosis and rosettes or pseudo rosettes so considering all this we uh, considering the patient's uh, patient's age that is 25 male with this site provided and the histomorphology we had some dds in our mind which were choroid plexus tumor including atypical papilloma and uh, choroid plexus carcinoma then vist because the patient we noted those highland globules at places reticular pattern and uh the such a, a young patient so we thought uh, also thought of uh, vists then metastasis and papillary meningioma and papillary ependymoma on the lower eye <coughs> so uh, with this morphology we uh, ran some ihcs and i would like to thank dr praveen sir and our reheja hospital for uh, running this markers for us <laughs> uh firstly we uh, we had a primary panel which were included gfap the g5 was negative uh, to uh, that rules out the papillary ependymoma r ema and s100p was also negative which also rule out meningioma sal4 was put for the uh, yists which is also negative uh, ck was focally positive in our case though we uh, we got s100 negativity or negative s100 it will not completely rule out choroid plexus tumor but before that we wanted to rule out the metastasis also so we had few uh, uh, primaries in our mind uh, considering that we put ihs like ttf1 and ck7 the ck7 and ttf1 both were negative ruling out the lung adenocs or prime lung primary and thyroid primary now we put paxit also and which was uh, strongly positive in our case so we thought uh, that this is the Uh, or we would like to uh, we are favoring metastasis of a renal origin and or uh, or lower urinary tract thank you any other opinion from the house let's unfold the story initially we got a squash cytology the uh, smears were quite cellular arranged in a papillary pattern at places along with nuclear pleomorphism however there was no glial background at this point we had a talk with neurosurgery people and they informed us the tumor was highly vascular the patient was hemodynamically unstable and considering so much vascularity of the tumor they thought it could be of intraventricular meningioma we again went back to our radiological uh, reports it was also suggesting of intraventricular meningioma so considering the uh, intraoperative finding and squash uh, and radiological imaging we gave the diagnosis of intraventricular meningioma let's quickly brief the salient feature of histopathology 
the tumor was quite cellular showing more of epithelial morphology having a tubular papillary or trabeculated pattern here again due to complex solid papillary pattern the tumor is more having a solid form now another focus of the tumor showing more of clear cell morphology at this high power we can also appreciate this uh, eosinophilic globule like cytoplasmic inclusion along with nuclear pleomorphism on extensive search we uh, got a uh, mitosis up to 2 per 10 high power field so considering the squash cytology and hne finding we have differential diagnosis as first as meningioma with papillary and clear cell feature second we thought of it could be papillary ependymoma with clear cell feature considering the morphology and epithelial morphology we thought it could be metastatic carcinoma and lastly we had a diagnosis of choroid plexus neoplasm so initially we did two markers that is gfap and ema both turned out to be negative so the possibility of meningioma and papillary ependymoma got ruled out we had a, a discussion in our department regarding this case and or all the differential diagnosis metastatic uh, carcinoma was fa was favored so for the further work up we sent this uh, case to tata memorial hospital uh, hepar 1 ck7 ttf1 came to be negative at the same time we asked neurosurgery people to get evaluated for uh, the patient for any lesion in the liver or kidney and there was not any lesion found on radiological imaging so here the possibility of metastatic carcinoma also ruled out and finally we got this three markers positive eaat1 kir7.1 with focal positivity for pancytokeratin summarize the isc all the markers were got negative just the positive marker we got this kir eat1 variable positive for pancytokeratin along with retained ini1 protein so to summarize our case it is uh, the left lateral lesion uh, it was a space occupying lesion in the left lateral ventricle along with histomorphological features suggesting of papillary epithelial tumor with co positivity of this kr7.1 and eat1 with focal positivity of pancytokeratin consider we considered the possibility of choroid plexus papilloma but coming to the histology again it was more of cellular tumor there was more nuclear pleomorphism blurring of papillary pore giving appearance of solid pattern and mitosis we rendered this k tumor as atypical choroid plexus papilloma who grade 2 i'd like to uh, say some uh, few points regarding this tumor it's a rare intraventricular papillary neoplasm generally more commonly seen in the children and only about 0.5% in adult of course there was diagnostic challenge in this case the tumor was not showing typical morphology of papilloma and there were varied morphology showing more of solid pattern clear cell morphology along with hepatoid cell like morphology so considering so much varied histopathological pattern diagnosing this case on the basis of histopathology alone was very difficult and was challenging i see of course help us in coming to the final diagnosis of this tumor we will also like to highlight regarding this two new promising isc marker that is kir 7.1 and ea1 the co positivity of both this marker has got a high sensitivity and specificity in diagnosing choroid plexus tumors for lastly it is said that clinical pathological and clinical radiological correlation of course it is of utmost important but in this case histomorphology and isc finding played a major role currently uh, our patient is doing very well he has regained his power on the right side of the limb thank you